you think about what is the toughest opponent swimming, it's probably the water. The water is not an entity that wants to allow you to swim through it peacefully. You have to fight it. The water's been sitting there waiting for you to come and telling you, mm-mm, mm-mm. The 50 meter swimming event is cool because it is a sprint. It's an all out sprint. I call it the perfectionist race. 18 cycles of perfected replication. This is 20 or 21 seconds. One singular lap in a 50 meter pool, and that is it. Very unique demands and very unique athletes that perform in this event. We swim, we ride, till we die. This is the science of swimming with David Curtis. I'm Scott Rodeo. I'm an orthopedic surgeon at HSS. My specialty is orthopedic sports medicine. I was a competitive swimmer growing up and swam all through high school and college. I swam at Stanford University and that's what led me to be interested in and pursue sports medicine. My name is David Curtis. I'm a Team USA athlete. I've been swimming since I was like eight years old. I started swimming at the YMCA as part of a stay safe program. I had sensory issues as a child, and there's just a calmness that it, the water brought me. And it's because I'm an unbelievably competitive person. I kind of fell in love and even, to be honest, got addicted to it. I'm 21. I'm pretty young for this sport. I've competed in the World Championships in Melbourne, Australia, where I medaled. The Pan American Games in Santiago, Chile, where I won gold. A silver medal in the 50 freestyle at the 2019 World Juniors in Budapest. Where I am now is a little bit hopeful. Allowance for mistakes in the 50 freestyle is next to none, especially when you're surrounded by people who don't make mistakes. The 800 freestyle, it's a longer race. If you make an error on a stroke, you still have X amount of laps to make up for it. As opposed to the 50 freestyle, if you make a technical mistake, the likelihood that you are to recover from that is, I would think, less than 1%. My strategy, walking up to the block, I'm almost in kind of a state of an aerobic high. I take huge deep breaths constantly for about four minutes prior to even getting up to the block. I really need to make sure that I'm getting as much oxygen to my lungs as possible before I inevitably do hop up on that block. The fastest point of your race is to start. When the gun goes off, these athletes need to have tremendous reaction time. I pride myself on my fast twitch muscles. Or cat like reflexes. You gotta have a fast reaction time. This is your type 2 fast twitch muscle fibers. When that gun goes off, your goal is to be as clean and efficient and powerful as possible. To get out in front and stay in front. Because if you're behind in the 50 freestyle, it is almost impossible. He's using his gluteus maximus, his hamstring muscles, to push off the block with tremendous force. It's really a combination of all of these movements simultaneously. It's like a high jumper or a long jumper, which demands really strong hip extensor muscles. To create that spring off that block at my soul from that diagonal position. And he's streamlining, he's putting his arms in the overhead position so as to minimize friction as he enters the water. I'm thinking about a hole that is probably no bigger than a playa bowl or like a chipotle bowl and getting yourself almost like a torpedo. Getting into that really tight diagonal like line. You're launching it as fast as you can through that to get yourself the maximum amount of velocity. I want to try it one more time. I know you don't want me to. I want to try it one more time. If you let your legs kick up, let your feet kick up, you're going to be out of that optimal zone and it's going to slow you down. His speed of entry, his angle of entry, all these small details are critically important. Then you're in the pool. Phase two. The next portion is the underwater part. The goal is to begin very rapid force production. You're gonna lose speed off of the start. It's just how things work. But the goal is to minimize as much as possible that velocity drop. One of the few sports where you have maximum use of the upper extremity and the lower extremities in seconds of hitting the water. Kicks really are a whole body maneuver. It's almost like an undulation if you think about like a dolphin, doing a motion that's kind of like this. When you do your underwater kick, everything is generated from here all the way down to your feet. It starts here with the pressing of the chest, and then it goes all the way down to the feet. Swimmers have phenomenal strength in their core muscles, the low back, abdominal wall, pelvic muscles, the erector spiny, spinal extensors in the back, and the rectus abdominis muscle in your abdominal wall, the oblique muscles in the abdominal wall. My quads are engaged, my hamstrings are definitely engaged on that up kick. It goes down into my calves and then the flex in the feet, all the way down to my toes. A lot of it has to do with my glutes as well, which is why deadlifts is such a great exercise because it really strengthens that area. 
Now this is one of the most important parts of the race here. Now I'm on the swimming portion, making sure that I'm not rushing my stroke. I love to rush my strokes. A lot of people when they come off their start and off their underwater, they rush. A lot of it is excitement. What Matt has taught me is patience. I'm being patient while also maintaining power and rate at the same time. It's a lot to think about because if I rush it, I'm not catching as much water as I possibly could. Catching water is everything from the second that my fingertips touch to enter the surface to when it's exiting back out. Gotta have a straight pull pattern that goes all the way down, making sure that we're exiting the water with the correct force, pushing that water out on top, trying not to rush that stroke so I get that height, I get that launch on top of that surface, and then making sure that entry into the next stroke is as perfect as it can be. That's technique, that's years of working with your coaches and perfecting your stroke. And the athletes use video, above water video, underwater video, to get objective feedback about their strokes. Pushing but yeah, watch. at least, yes. Watch them stand up, yeah, watch, see? All these muscles are firing simultaneously. Muscles around the shoulder, the rotator cuff is important, and other muscles that stabilize the shoulder blade. Elevator scapulae, there's two rhomboid muscles. A lot of it has to do with how I kick. Instead of having a flat foot, I've got a little bit of a curve down that when I kick, it forces me up. It's creating a little bit of lift that pushes me up towards the surface. There's a different level of speed that I can tap into when I'm high versus when I'm low. Because the lower you are, the harder it is to swim just because of resistance and the water fighting against you. As the athlete goes faster, the resistance of the water goes up much quicker. So maybe for every 1% increase in speed, the resistance of the water goes up like 4%. So it's a logarithmic increase. Our next step is going from the 25 to the 35. That's where I die. It's really the time where you need to persevere the most, simply because that's where you start to hit that panic stage. You start to run out of oxygen. You start to get tired. You start to build up lactic acid. By that depletion coming, it starts to make things harder. Your muscles start to seize up a little bit. Your brain starts to panic because it wants that oxygen. It's all about surviving. Because of the repetitive overhead activities, the muscles fire at a very high rate continuously, and consequently, these muscles can fatigue. You have to fight through that but efficiently. You're racing, you're splashing, the water is resisting you. The difference between you having a faulty stroke and somebody next to you could be 0.02, and that's what's gonna be the difference between you making a team or not. Critically important part is the finish and timing the finish. From 35 on, this is where the finish happens. You really gotta nail the finish and you gotta really nail the timing. So that last stroke, when I come in, I'm extending all the way through. There's no short arm stroke. The extension is all the way through and then I can get the longest, most powerful touch possible. I try to give myself visuals without having to look up because that's going to slow you down. Set landmarks on the bottom of the pool, cracks, anything that really tells me exactly where I'm at really helps me time that finish properly. That finish, there's a wall. You're coming into a wall. It's, it's sitting there. It's, it's solid. You have to be very careful. You're coming in with a lot of force and a lot of speed. I've actually seen people break their wrists because of the velocity that they're coming into the wall. I make sure that I impact the touch pad and then I'll actually do a little kind of touch rotate to remove that pressure from the wrist and the elbow. You could seriously injure yourself. I was a little bit short there. If you miss time your finish and somebody who's right with you next to you hits their finish properly, they get out touch you by 0.01, 0.02. And that's the difference between making a team and not making a team. And we've seen that many, many times over the years at the elite level. I believe this Olympic team for the 50 freestyles can be the fastest in history. 21.39 is what I think is going to make it, which is almost four tenths of a second from where I am now. That is a astronomical amount of time. What makes an athlete great like David? Athletes have a unique ability to focus on a long-term goal and stay focused on that goal. And that's what distinguishes some of these elite athletes striving to get as close to perfection as possible. And what that means for me is really being in tune with how hard I'm working, really learning what 100% actually is, and then tapping into that again and again and again. A lot of what I do is to figure out how to better my relationship and interaction with the water. A lot of the misconception with swimming is power, 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 strength, strength, strength. But you can have power, 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 and strength, strength, strength. I work on that all the time, but... You can't really apply it if you don't understand your relationship, how you sit, how you are in the water. And bettering that relationship is imperative to going faster. You gotta put everything in to that 21 seconds, or else you're not really gonna, you're not gonna make it very far.